somebody important. <laughs> As I said in the first panel, this is not the Jen Dykes Comedy Hour. Let me introduce you to Mr. Richard Dean Anderson. somehow um, 
And blessedly, I, I had learned some <laughs> lessons doing a MacGyver, which just beat me up to no end. Um, I have, you know, like a, a back surgery, three knee surgeries, uh, one concussion, um, two broken arms. This is not, that's not all from the show, but <laughs> a portion of that is from, from the show. A lot of broken fingers from doing that. Um, I don't know if, if anyone keeps, uh, really pays attention to the inserts. Eventually, we started using uh, uh, my brother's hands, which look similar, but they're much smaller, of course. <laughs> but, it's an Anderson thing. Um, uh, but my fingers uh, would, I, Swiss Army knives, you can't give me one and I won't play, and, and I'll play with it. I sliced both of these fingers almost off, playing around, um, and juggling knives. I never did that. I did learn how to throw a knife, by, which is ridiculous because a Swiss Army knife is not balanced for throwing. <laughs> Those of you who are holding them know. But, um, yeah, and I break fingers all the time. So eventually they started looking too gnarly to go on camera and we had to hire my brother to uh, do the inserts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, when we found out that you were going to be coming this year, we posted on our uh, Facebook page to invite people to ask questions to kind of get a preemptive... Look out! <laughs> <laughs> She owes me money. <laughs> and she asks, of your two most memorable characters, who is closer to you in personality? Uh, Jack O'Neill or Angus MacGyver? Ooh. Anybody see Legend? Yes. Yeah. To be honest with you, that... It, it, the character that I created for Legend was more a, compila a compilation of my grandfather um, on my dad's side and a lot of my own um, imagination, basically. But um, he was in, it, through different periods of my life, uh, that character, those of you who haven't seen it, too bad. Um, <laughs> Promoting it. Where can you find it? That's a great question. Anybody? No. Here's I could. Really? Well, I had a ball doing Legend. It was uh, probably the most fun I've had in front of the camera uh, with a character. But as far as the two biggies, the, the guys, I, I think Jack O'Neill's got kind of this the sense of humor, snarky, sardonic, <laughs> cynic. <laughs> Yeah, it was the poor writers, poor Brad Wright and, and the guys just yeah. didn't know, we didn't, in the early goings, they didn't really know what to do with me, but <laughs> thankfully, this is, any of you getting into the business in any way, shape, or form, but especially if you want to produce, um, if you want an actor to learn his lines right away, be on time, uh, hit a mark, don't be late, etc. Make him a producer. <laughs> because then he becomes responsible, he or she, becomes responsible for all those elements, uh, budgetary and, and the like. Um, and lost that point. Where, where was I going with that? Anyone? Oh, Jack O'Neill. <laughs> that, that was an Anderson moment right there. <laughs> Um, yeah, Jack O'Neill, sense of humor. Uh, MacGyver was just too polite, I think. <laughs> we have a lot of MacGyver questions, actually, that all run together, which is pretty cool. So You're all assuming that I have any semblance of a memory left. <laughs> well, they have to do with the MacGyver Stargate crossover. <laughs> what? The line in the first 
Manhattan's a roadabout. Can't you just MacGyver it? The Manhattan thing says. Yeah. What is that? Ha ha ha. Does that suffice for everyone's answer? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was adorable, yeah. as I told Brad later. Oh, okay. <laughs> the other question was, did, did, was that a suggestion on your part? God, no. <laughs> no, as Amanda's, uh, I think, in cahoots with Brad Wright. Or... Well, and we see the outtake from uh, the Antarctica, was it Antarctica episode, help me? Yeah, uh, the outtake, where she says, my God, I'm trapped in ice. Okay, with MacGyver. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. Wait, isn't that the, the, the first reference, or was that the second? No, that was, that was one that wasn't actually in the show. It was an outtake. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, oh, yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> uh, to what do you contribute the great success of the Stargate franchise? Um, seriously? Um, or not. <laughs> uh, don't give me that leeway. <laughs> um, I, 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 bottom line is that we had, uh, first of all, Stargate was a, um, uh, a movie, as you all know. Uh -huh. um, and it, it, that in itself brought an audience to, uh, you know, a, a kind of a culty, you know, one shot uh, deal audience. Um, so when it became. Um, a franchise or a, a series, we had uh, those folks kind of tuning in um, right away. And the other half of it was, I was told by uh, John Symes, who was, God bless him, um, hired me for uh, Stargate, but he said that the other half is going to come to see MacGyver, what he's doing next. So we had two factions to a combination of audiences that uh, got us off on the right right foot, and I think the ultimately the cast, um, the camaraderie, and the, um, the cohesiveness, and the, the sense of play that we, we had, um, kind of the audiences were pretty comfortable with, the, with that initial cast. In fact, I gave comments um, uh, about that, about how like, it just hasn't been the same since, you know, because they had Atlantis, and then, was the last universe? One? Universe, right. <laughs> <laughs> universe is a different world altogether. Yeah. Well, worlds, I guess. Yeah. Different aliens, different things. Yeah, I, and it, I think it went off the air ultimately because it dealt with too, too many parallel universes. I know I did an episode or two of it, and when uh, we were shooting it, I didn't have any idea what was going on. <laughs> Where I was, what I was doing, what I was, year, forget year, <laughs> but world. <laughs> now, I was, I think the audience has got lost eventually. It's a very heady show, but, uh, but there's a contingent that loves that as well. <laughs> the science guys, yeah. Something we always hear from other guests that we have is about behind the scenes antics, pranks, and so on and so forth. He's shaking his head already. Do you have a favorite moment or, or silliness that happened behind the scenes? Or were you the one saying stop? I mean, you're shaking your head. It's me? Yeah, were you going to stop it, Chris? No. <laughs> no, the. It, I tried to keep it as loose as possible um, and as comfortable as possible for the actors and the crew. I sort of wanted to, and this goes back to my earlier comment about uh, helping to produce the show. Um, I kind of <coughs> set the tone for the set, for the what went on on the set. Um, so it was imperative that I keep things as light and fun as possible because. The hours that, you've all heard all this before, but the hours that a crew um, endures, um, the cast has the easiest time of all of, of the whole uh, echelon of, of people that put on shows like that. But, um, you know, it, you don't want anybody saying, oh shit, I gotta go to work again. Sorry. 
<laughs> Shoot, I have to go, gotta go to that Stargate thing again now. I wanted them to want to show up and have fun. Uh, we kind of maintained that fairly well. So the antics, yeah, I, I, don't, know, I don't remember any of them really. Because it's all in the moment, you know. Um, this is from a hopeful. Do you know of any further developments in the Stargate franchise in the process as of now? What? Do you know of any further developments in the Stargate franchise as of right now? No, why? You? Because they wanted to know. Oh. Um, Honestly, I wish I could say, you know, maybe, but I can't. I, I can say that. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but the likelihood is not so maybe. Um, I honestly don't know what, uh, how those guys are thinking. Um, I got asked to do the voice in a game, a uh, uh, Stargate game, but uh, that's as far as it went. Oh. As far as why? Just curious. What's the... Oh, uh, don't worry. We, we've been hopeful for the, the Stargate games for the last few years. Oh, really? Yeah, well, there was one that started, and it was like an online multiplayer thing, and then it didn't start, or unstarted, or whatever. I don't know what And then they were going to do a first-person shooter, and then it didn't happen. So we're still kind of waiting to see if that happens in any way, shape, or form. But you saying, I got to ask to do the voice. I'm like, oh, really? Yeah, well, they wanted... Um... Um, I would say, they wanted MacGyver's voice to be doing the Stargate. He kept fixing it with a Jim Clip and a rubber band. Will you stop that? <laughs> okay. Now, cut that out. <laughs> look out, look out! <laughs> so, what do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> I read, oh, are you filtering these? I read that you worked at Marineland when you were younger. Did that affect your choice of having Sea Shepherd as a charity now, or were you always interested in the sea? From Loretta Painter. Loretta. Loretta. And apparently I'm not loud enough for once in my life. I want to be called Loretta. <laughs> well, Loretta. Stand up, wave, hi. Well, so, well, we can't see. What was that reading from? Oh, I want to be called Loretta. What? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Where? <laughs> What's that from? <laughs> Why am I up here? <laughs> I'll just make you the stuff. You saved me from myself. <laughs> So, Shepherd, Dragon Con does a lot with charity, so we're all interested in you and your charities and yeah. your charity work. So tell us about that. A bit about it. Well, all the, the, the conventions that I've done in my life, um, well, at least in this, this life, um, <laughs> I've, I set up a situation with my, uh, my business management company that um, any of the monies, the fees that I would take from, uh, from the conventions, um, I would just, I, I had set up a, a system where the monies would just go directly to uh, mostly Sea Shepherd, um, but also the, uh, the, the River Keeper. Right. And uh, the other one that has been, the, the other big one that is kind of dear to my heart is the art of the brain. There's a very close to your friend of mine who has brain cancer and um, she's been running this, this uh, event for so many years. And um, so anyway, that's uh, as far as being involved with uh, uh, Sea Shepherd, um, having worked at Marineland, there was no correlate, no correlation at all, except that I am drawn to things of water. For some, I'm being from Minnesota, where you know all the lakes are made. It's one of our exports, and along with the mosquitoes that go with them. Um, so I and I met Paul Watson in, in Alaska many many years ago, 
And I just hearing him speak about uh, with the kind of passion that he has uh, about all things oceanic, but especially the whales, which is his. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's his main thrust, his main love is uh, for saving the whales and the campaigns that they've been going on over decades, uh, almost two decades now. Just got my attention, initially got my attention because of, of the way he presented it, but then the more I heard Paul speak, um, the more I listened to the content and then of course that's sent me off into research and I was hooked. So, um, near and dear to my heart. And of course, River uh, Keepers Alliance is, is kind of self. I won't go off into that tangent. You gotta stop me eventually or I'll get all serious on you. Okay, serious works at times. Sometimes we need to, you know. Oh, but anyway, to, to, to your point, okay. um, the, uh, the monies that I make from, this is the first, type of uh, convention that I've done of this sort. And it's, um, I, I just want to take the opportunity to thank anybody that's that's shelling out hard-earned money for, uh, for a picture or whatever, um, because it's going to, it's filtering through me, but that's just a business thing. It'll go uh, to Sea Shepherd primarily. <laughs> The night that they put those photo ops online, it blew up. We were watching, and suddenly it was like X number left, and then there were 10 fewer, and then 20 fewer than that, and they were gone. What, what are those? The photo opportunities, you're taking photos with the fans. And really? the signatures. <laughs> As I understand it, we're doing it this morning. A little bit, yeah. A little bit? They're... People were very excited. Well, just well I'm very polite, by the way. Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, I'm so proud of you. And I'm so sorry about the heat. I'll try to do something about it. I actually, I only have one kind of snarky, snotty-nosed actor thingy demand, and, uh, and it can't always work out, but I, I sweat like the dickens, just just sitting, just, I have, the, my core is from Minnesota, so anything above, like, freezing. <laughs> yeah, freezing. Uh, I just pour out, and so um, I see some of you have got <laughs> coats on, for God's sake. <laughs> I don't understand you. I don't understand me either. But I, I've always wanted to have a, a cold environment to, especially to talk, because you get into warm, as you all know. It's cold, because I still up here on yeah. top of that. That's a great time. Somebody farting. <laughs> Cooper. <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> On that comedic note, you'll like this one. Ha I'm gonna wait till he finishes sipping. Okay, or not. How did you feel about being such a prominent character crush for Patty and Selma on The Simpsons? <laughs> What would you want from Laura Boyle on Facebook? Laura Flint Boyle? No. <laughs> you answer her? Um, Laura, are you here? Oh, yeah, I heard yeah. It's Laura, right? She's over there. <laughs> what is the question? If you could have any alien tech from Stargate, what would you want? Alien tech? Technology. Uh, <laughs> I'm yeah. new here. <laughs> kids these days. Um, I don't know. I need some examples. Um, invisibility I've always wanted to be. I know that's kind of simple, but time travel, probably time travel, invisibility. This is a question that just came up here that I'd really like to hear your answer on. We do a lot, like I said, with the charity work here at Dragon Con, and with the Stargate group, it kind of got kicked off with Don Davis in 2008. Ah, we were the American Heart Association at the time. Bless you. The question that's just been handed to me is what is your favorite memory of Don? Uh, yeah. Way to lighten the evening. I, this is, but it's real close to all of us. I mean, we all, yeah. you know. Yeah. 
know, Don, just one of the most lovely gentlemen I've ever gotten to work with. He was probably the most effusively complimentary human being I've ever met. I always liked going, if I was like feeling insecure or anything, um, anything negative, but just go in the general vicinity of Don. And he just, this litany of compliments and like, oh man, I remember, and well, you're so great, you do so much, and oh God, you're beautiful, and oh, and the acting thing you did the other day was so great. I said, keep going down. <laughs> he was just, um, and nothing not genuine about it. He was just really a, a straightforward, good old boy. And, um, uh, do nothing but listen to him all day to weave his stories of the Ozarks. I think is oh, I'm just a just an old Southern boy. That is the way Lord made me. That's the way I am. <laughs> Shit. We don't like to move. You wouldn't swear, but bless bless John. And uh, even further back for me is Dana Elkar, who played. Yeah. There we go. Partner on a diver, so and bless his heart as well. Yeah. Well, anything else you want to leave us with? Uh, we're wrapping the panel. Um. Where's yeah. The Where are you going? We're not done. <laughs> Here, pup. Come on, boy. No. Oh, I want you all to just. Um, well, first of all, that whole voting thing. I, don't want to be a pain in the butt, but this is probably the largest room of human beings I'll be able to talk to before before voting time. But you know, it's uh, it's corny and to say so, and so like everybody's. But you got to You just got to do it for all the reasons that other people bore you with, and I won't right now. But do it. format, I'd, I'd, I'd spew why I think uh, one guy's <laughs> would work better over the other. But, um, uh, and the only other, what I'll leave you with is uh, all you to just take a good look at my t-shirt. <laughs> no, it's that I've lost weight. <laughs> I actually have not, but I promise I will. <laughs> well, we've had fun today, or I've had fun today. <laughs>